Welcome to Ratified. Myself and the boys here, we're going to speak about some of our most favourite games uh, where all bets were, were, were off. Paddy, starting with yourself, can you bring us back through a, a memorable game? <laughs> you said favourite games, uh, infamous games. Um, I think one of the, the most famous games we were involved in my Dublin time was, was our semi-final against you guys in 2014. Um, it was just a pivotal game, I think, for, for our group. It was it was a bad defeat for us at the time. I think we learnt a hell of a lot of lessons from it. We were the reigning all Ireland champions at the time, and we'd won that year's National League as well, uh, quite comfortably, and we were were big favourites playing you guys. You guys had beaten our man in the quarter-final, and I just remember that game became the kind of just a seminal moment for that group. We we didn't lose a match, championship match, after that game for the next five years, um, because of everything we took from it. So can it was, we can we claim a few of them all there? Can have them now, or it doesn't matter now. But uh, no, it's it's just a, a massive lesson for everyone. Um, as a group, we were it was one of the worst defeats we'd ever had. Um, we just got ahead of ourselves. We we, we weren't focused. We Became everything that we kind of hated in, in, in teams. We were indisciplined. We were arrogant. We didn't respect you guys. We, we thought we were going to win that game comfortably. Um, and I remember we met a week after it um, in the Gibson Hotel. And we had a really heavy uh, meeting. Jim Gavin led it and the players. And we were all challenged. And the worst thing, well, we couldn't really look ourselves in the mirror. like. It's a really bad place to be as a as an elite athlete or you're trying to be serious Gaelic footballer and every single one of us could look and just go, I didn't I didn't prepare well for that game. So our analysis, our preparation, we were cut out physically, mentally, we didn't expect what you guys were gonna do. Um just it's just a bad trait to have as a team. I think it's, it's it seems very unusual though. Yeah. Given the team that you then become for the next five years, or how I think we became that team because was of that. It, was match. It, but was a lesson not only for players but for management Everyone, as yeah. well to everyone. Jim kind of spoke about it. That I, I put it this way: from that point on, there was never one match, and I mean O'Brien Cup, first week of January, where we were not physically and mentally prepared for our opposition analysis. We could be playing. People let, don't believe me when I say this, but we, we could be playing Wicklow in the Brown Cup on the 3rd or 4th of January, and we'd have analysis done the week before, 27, 28 of December. The players would go through, this is their team, this fella is right-footed, left-footed, this is analysis of every single player, and the players led that. Is the, is the players, is, are the players watching all that video and taking the yeah. clips, or is the video analysts doing it, and then the players are just presenting it? The, the video analysts would pull clips together, right. but, but they, they were doing that in 2014 as well. Okay. The players weren't watching it. Right. But you go back to the Gibson Hotel the week after the Donegal yeah. match. How long was that? How long was that meeting? About two and a half hours. And like, how was Jim during that time? Jim was. Jim kind of held his own hands up as well. And for a guy, and some of you guys would have spoke to him um, since when he's finished with Dublin. He prides himself on preparation, attention to detail, unbelievable manager, strategist. And he said, well, I wasn't prepared for that. And then I'd say nearly every player to a man would have, would have spoke at some point about, yeah, it, was, it wasn't any one individual's fault. We, we were successful as a team and collectively we were unsuccessful that day and we all let each other down. Um, and it's just, I, I put that game in. I actually haven't watched a lot of it back. Um, the lessons we learned from were kind of off the pitch in terms of respect, humility, um, not listening to outside noise and distractions and everyone telling you they're best, you're this, that and the other, because that's what the commentary was at the time. There was a, there was a, stru there was a weed that looked like from the outside too, there was a structural slight tweak, like I mean, at what, that, at that time in yeah. 14, if we look at through that whole Dublin era, that was the best was Dublin team, that, like, <laughs> that was the most unbelievable gung-ho pieces of attack, once you lost the ball, everybody pressed high up the pitch, you know, it was just, you were, at, and like, another thing's forgotten about that game against ourselves, you were 9-3, 9-4 <laughs> up there in the first and half, and we, were, ha we, were, we, were, hanging we were hanging on. We missed a few goal chances We were hanging, well. hanging on, like. Um, and it, it's funny, though, that 
you were talking about maybe that attention to detail that you had missed that stage and then you're reading Jimmy McGuinness's book and he is literally sitting for nine months prior to it, yeah. plotting and planning. That's what happens when you, we were champions at the time. Yeah, yeah. When there's a responsibility as champions, you need to expect people are going to watch what did you guys do, um, why were they successful. I was saying to you, Murph, we would have had a big... We play very pride ourselves in kind of playing very traditional football, similar, similar to, to Kerry and and our philosophy under Jim. We'd won the All Ireland in twenty thirteen, playing this really attacking style of play. And as players, it was a forward. It was magic to play. I mean, it was like we would go training, and training is fifteen on fifteen. Go and play and beat your man, and it was it was just you loved it, absolutely loved it. And we kind of had this mentality that we were going to be the team to kind of break the blanket defence. That was our kind of, you said, our North Star, that winning the All-Ireland is magic, but you need something else then to try and retain it. And this, this was it, we're going to do that. And the reality was, Jim McGuinness and other teams were looking at us going, well, Dublin play this way. They're, we know they're going to attack. There's gaps. There's man-to-man, -man. okay, we can drag players around the pitch. He's going to follow you no matter what. I remember Michael Dermot Colley ended up being a full back on, on Gallagher and just... It's naive for most of the time not to expect that analysis to be done, but that's kind of where we were at. And the reality is the players, I'd always say, the players need to take responsibility in that. We didn't prepare for all eventualities. We didn't expect that because we weren't humble enough to do it. Um, and you get your feedback on the pitch, and we got it. And from that point on, I don't think, I don't think we would have won the next six All-Ireland titles without that game. I, I, not a chance. And like say, <clears throat> you it said there, everything for you us. said that you used to watch the videos from then on, that there was no stone left unturned. I had a conversation with you before about that. Like, I mean, you told me that you used to go in training at around, I don't know, half five, five mm. o'clock, and that you could, wouldn't come out until 11. Mm. Or like, and like, you'd have your, after training, you have your food, and then it was video analysis. Mm. How long was the video analysis for? Like, I mean. As long as it took. Yeah, but was that like, that wasn't every night, was it? <laughs> in during championship, it would have been. Yeah, but but for every if, if we were playing in a Brown Cup match or a league match, and we, league is obviously week on week on week, we'd be Tuesday night. We'd review the game that we just played. This didn't. What, why are you doing that? That was good. That was bad. Thursday night were could be a couple of hours analysing who we're playing on the Saturday or Sunday, and that that was the price we felt we had to pay to be consistently successful, and. But I, I wouldn't change it. It's a big ask. But we won, I think we won five national, league, four or five national leagues in a row. We ended up winning the championship year on year, and it was hard. Jesus Christ, it was hard. But Jimmy, that was Jim, paid the price. But you talk about revolutionising the game, and I don't think there's like we did video analysis, but we never did video analysis to that degree. Like we we had we had the apps on the phone. Um, we had the app on the phone where you could like say if I was marking Paddy Andrews tomorrow, I could get all the clips on Paddy Andrews and check what way does he turn, what way does Michael Murphy turn, does he turn on his left or right, when does he kick, or, you know, all this. And we, we, we did that. But it was up to the individual to, to kind of do that. Collectively, we weren't doing, we were doing video analysis, of course we were. We weren't doing it on Tuesday night. We weren't doing uh, a review of the game on the Sunday. Uh, not, not to that degree. If we had a, a scalding of a game, yeah, well, you would. But I mean, I think Every match. You know, Dublin. Every you match. talk about Dublin and, and, and the six in a row, and I think, I think that was probably one of the huge things. Massive, yeah. massive part. And the reason I wasn't. That's the genius of Jim, created that environment where that was the culture. If if you didn't do it, and you arrived to training and the players would like be presented to each other or whatever, and we're playing this. This is how Donegal are going to set up defensively and go through the players. And if you didn't know your stuff, you are getting you're getting it off the players, and you would get it. And there, there was a couple of times, not many, but players weren't prepared. And I think the beauty of our group, we had Stephen or James McCarthy or whoever it might be, and you better have your homework done. Because we had all experienced that day, that defeat, the hurt of it. You lost the game because you, you were lazy, basically. And it was just a lesson for that group and we carried it and we carried it and we carried it. Declan Darcy spoke a lot about this as well. The scoreline, we'd have the scoreline up, we conceded this. Why did that happen? Are you good players? Yeah, you're all good players. 
Are you good lads? Yeah, you're, you're good lads, but you want good teammates to each other. Any day you go out and you score 17 points, you probably expect to win the game. Do you know, and then, but you can see 3-14, and it was the goals. You know, it was... Murph was right. We, 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 we changed our style of play. We learned our lessons. We probably weren't as, uh, as gung-ho in the following years, but we learned this is what it's going to take to win this game. We were different challenges. Teams would have played defensively against us. We would have been a lot more patient in our build-up play. A lot more control, wasn't there? There's a lot, and the middle was kind of kind of like, we would have remembered the Tuesday after their Armagh game, we played poor in the quarters. Yeah. Just scraped over the line. Probably fortunate enough to do so, if, if a right be told. Nobody gave us a... a, a but yeah, I always remember that was the narrative around Tuesday that game. Night and the, and the Porter Cabin, the convoy wasn't built at the time. The lap of the Porter Cabin were on. I always remember Jim coming in and no review of the Armagh game. It was just straight to this blueprint of a plan to basically beat Dublin and a lot of it was around not so much stopping but how we were going to exploit and try and score um, so the narrative wasn't around you know negating negating it was about this is the way we're going to do it we're going to do it off kickouts over the top of the press and then the other one the other big challenge was how we're going to get out of our own half with the ball because once we got out of our own half it was just open season did that surprise you coming into that team meeting that Jim was focusing so much on really going after him. Did you think? I think that was that was the magic of Jim still is. To, I'm sure to this day to the boys that are in the dressing room, he is so like you're on with video. Like it's the two things they would have shared. Like with Jim, we would have sat and watched the whole game of every game, sat like for hours constantly. Yeah. But they, uh, he's just such a way of of, communi of 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 putting in the work to understand it, that this is a, a right ploy and then has an unbelievably passionate way of communicating how this is going to work. Um, and then all of a sudden, as we spoke about before, once that happens, once that you're in the game and this thing's working out, you're like, Jesus, we just after saying that in the dressing room beforehand, yeah, this is going it. to work. And, and then you believe it. And like it there's no doubt that Dublin took the, the eye off the ball, but it's important to recognise as well that Donegal what knew what they were about, them? like, and you mentioned Jim. There was a plan, like, to, to win this game, like. Uh, to win it, and that, that was the big one. Was the on the attack, was on the, the kickouts, and on the getting out of the out of the press, like that was it. But that's the amazing thing. It's like it wasn't. We're not going to lose this game. We're going to go after it. Yeah. And this is not just obviously that's a, a very famous game. But I think in it, we, we spoke about in other shows. You, you need to go and win in All Ireland. You don't. You don't not lose it. And if you're playing the best teams, and we seen it last year's final, Dublin and Kerry and the other, they just go at each other. They believe that they are good enough to win this game and they attack it. Yeah, and it's a big one you see with teams at the moment, isn't it? Playing conservatively, or I get, get that, there, it gets you to a point, yeah. but to win the biggest prizes, and you said it, Murph, you went after Dublin. And so not many teams were going after us at that point. It so was, how do we contain? In terms of yourself then, if, if you're talking here about Jim, from where you were, that famous day in Cross McGlen, like, what was your greatest game then with, or what was your all bets game or off uh, with Donegal in the years following? I, th I think the, the, the way we kind of look at this is, is the wildest game you're part of. We're all part of it's just things are just out the window. <laughs> so this doesn't make any sense, this game. Like, you come away from it and saying, did that really happen? You look at it back over years and you're saying, Jesus, that there was wild. You know, for us it was. For me, and you know, it was uh, down here with uh, against Kildare in All Ireland uh, quarter final in 2011. Um, it was he had won the Ulster Championship for the first time in I don't know many years uh, against Derry four weeks prior, um, and then I was getting ready for Kildare. And Kildare were honoured at them that time. McGinnis in charge. Yeah. 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 They had been in the semi final the year uh, before, lost to down, by a down kick yeah. of a ball to down. All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, famous game down here. It was tight, like you know, it was lowish enough scoring. It was tight. It was, it was exciting. There was turnovers and mistakes. It was Saturday evening under lights. Yeah. Bit of a slippy ball. Wee bit of dew. Um, actually, didn't start the game. Uh, oh, you had an injury coming into it. Doctors was it, and physio says that um, the hamstring wasn't good enough to last seventy minutes. But did you line out as though you were? I lined Playing. out. Did you do the parade? Had, you, you look back on these things now. Do you know, like when you're in a you're dressing room, when you're, in a, when you're in a dressing room, you think, <laughs> this, this, makes sense. Sense. this is the best <laughs> idea. This, this, makes, this makes total sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I look back on it now. I'm like, what <laughs> an undergod was that? Whose idea was that? That was 
Jim's I go out, yeah. tick the, did toss. the parade, yeah. did the toss, did the final huddle, and then ran off the bus. Huddled off, dragging the leg. Absolutely scundered, heading off across the sideline. Uh, yeah. Head off the pitch. And the way it actually did transpire then, I came on and it was after 15 minutes. And ended up playing for the rest of the full game and extra time, so it was grand to go and play. So I never listened to him. We were a doctor after. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a, it was a crazy game. I think it'll always be famous for Kevin Cassidy's point. Yeah. At, at that time, um, just that if you looked at the two minutes before that, it summed up the entire game. Kildare could easily have won it. Chaos. We yeah. pure and utter chaos. Won the ball. Ball up the corner. Uh, eventually works his way out to Kevin Castle. This and just there, keeps but. saying all the time, yeah. like, that was my pocket. Off his left foot. Uh, <laughs> well, he had that one in his locker. Off right. his yeah. left foot. Oh. I would have thought maybe his right. Yeah. But he would have been practising. Because even, I read recently where there was a stage that year where he felt he wasn't going as well as what he wanted. And again, we're talking about man management. He went to McGuinness and said, I just need to go back to the club and this coach that coached me whenever I was underage and just let me do a wee bit of my own fitness stuff and my own skill stuff and then come back in and I was like, I wouldn't have thought you could away with that with McGuinness but according to Kevin it did and he, he felt those extra few weeks or few sessions of just shooting by himself in those areas. He did have, a, did have a boom of a kick, like I remember just the days and games and he had an absolute like Sometimes when you're in the edge of the square, he was playing wing back. You were always on the receiving end of a few of them. He could boom them from downtown, but just that one, like it didn't deviate. It went straight over outside the left. It was a, it was a phenomenal kick, and it was, uh, yeah, it was a, just a, one of those great nights. Like that was a bad night as well. The weather wise, the weather wise was sticky and was there. I always remember Jim. The the, the 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 he summed it up brilliantly. I think it was in the aftermath that he just says, you know, and the sweat's kind of on it. And who's been interviewed by? And he says that is that's loving. Like, you know, everybody <laughs> was just, you were actually loving, like, you know what I mean? Because um, what I love about that is, like, I mean, you talk about games and sometimes you think, okay, the biggest game, like, it might be the final. But these games, they weren't finals. They were, no. you know, quarterfinals, semifinals. Finals you are usually a bit cagey on things, aren't they? It's like they're, there's a lot of, maybe more nerve maybe in it. I think going back to that, I think finals a lot of the times so I asked you, but I always felt Dublin played differently. It looked like maybe they didn't, obviously, you're telling me they don't, but it's like you want to final. Don't lose, you know. There's a big difference between don't lose and let's go and try yeah, and win yeah, this thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. In terms of yourself, Mark, what? Well, you, you had many big days, but like, what would be a highlight or what would stand out for you across a, a yeah. super playing career? Um, we, I suppose, 2014, we played, we played, uh, played Mayo out here in the drawn match. I never forget. And I was, I was chatting to you, Murph, about say, long diagonal balls in, and David Moore and like Mayo should have won that game. They should have beaten Kerry in the, in the drawn match. They, but, you know, Donny, he came off the bench. Donny hadn't featured, I don't think, during yeah, that he year. played much that summer. And, like, at the start of the, at that year, nobody was giving Kerry a chance. Uh, we, we, we were down to Parky Cueve. We were, like, Cork were hot favourites. They destroyed us in the league. Um, and that, that Donny, or uh, David Moran put that long diagonal ball into Donny. He... Passes it, Donny wins it, passes it to James, back of the net, we get our second chance. But that year in particular, for myself, it was a tough year personally. I, there was a lot going on. And then, you know, football was my kind of, you know, it was, it was yeah, it was my outlet. And I, I, I enjoyed it. And I, I was, like, 2013, coming off the, the, the last to, to Dublin the semi-final, we wanted to kind of get back. We felt there was the nucleus of the likes of Declan O'Sullivan, you know, but then you lost the Gooch. Um, he done his cruciate. He did his cruciate. But then James, James was coming. And James was really at the stage now, you know, where he was 2013. Phenomenal. He was year. just phenomenal. Like, and, you know, and then just at the end of the year, Donny, he reinvented himself again. And so the replay for me in Limerick, the game was huge controversy surrounding the game. It was brought down to, to Limerick. But it was an amazing atmosphere because it was a full house. It would be like watching now a Munster hurling final. Yeah. And you know the atmosphere in a Munster hurling final. It's incredible. And so we played, we played against, <laughs> against Mayo. The, it was, I was 
Well, see, like, see, I, see, just sitting at home watching that, that was one game where you were envious. You were going, it was incredible. what an occasion for those players to yeah. be part of it. And it, it had it felt totally different for an All-Ireland semi-final for you. It not been in Dublin. Yeah, look, I suppose from my point of view, as I said, it was for me, it was a tough year for me. And, and like I was going through stuff. And then I get a phone call on a Thursday night from Eamon Fitzmaurice to say, listen, you're not starting. And it was like a bolt of lightning because I said, and you started the first game. Yeah, and I suppose like okay, it who were you on? It was I was on Andy Moran for a while, and yeah. I, I I forget who else I was on, but it wasn't my best game, but it certainly wasn't my worst game. Do you know? I mean, I felt I felt I was going okay. Could I have been better? Of course, I could have been. I, I think we all could have been better, yeah. but I, I I certainly wasn't at my best. Did I see this coming down the tracks? I didn't, and I was I was devastated, absolutely devastated, and I was never ever dropped before, you know. And this to me, like, was I, I did just didn't see it coming, and and I thought then, you know, that geez, is this is this it for me, like, you know? And, and uh, the game started. We were seven points down. Shane Enright, this after twenty minutes, Shane Enright uh, got a yellow card, should have been sent off. And, you know, it was just like, it was just crazy stuff. Crazy, you couldn't make it up. And so I was on the pitch after 20 minutes. Just, just, that was just the look, the yeah. look of it. And ended up having a fairly good match. It kicked, kicked a score, it went to extra time. And we really took off. There was like, there was this fella that he was, uh, he ran right. onto the pitch. He ran yeah. onto the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his poor daughter was trying to get him <laughs> off the pitch. Up. I believe afterwards he was in Supermax taking selfies afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> He was so famous. I was one like, of the two stewards trying to, right. trying to. Yeah, yeah but the there was, there was, um, there was like I remember the drawn match, and I was marking Andy Moore, and there was this fellow running onto the field with water, and he was saying like, um, he's gone, he's gone, Andy, his legs are gone, he's he's done of it. And Andy's I was saying, older than you, like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, yeah, it's possibly, no, but anyway. No, yeah, but he was. Uh, so this fellow was coming on, and I was saying like, who the is this guy? And I uh, kept coming on, kept coming on, and I just wanted to get a shot at this fella. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the drawing was over, and we had our meeting, and uh, Anthony Maher, the quietest man in the team, and he sh he's so, who's this guy running onto the field? <laughs> and like, we, uh, so we were, we were on a mission, and uh, like, the other guy, Kevin McLaughlin, was another fella who was kind of, he was a bit chirpy, you know, on, on the day itself. Like, been, yeah. We had kind of scores to settle the second day out, and I said, Jesus, will I get on at all to, to settle these scores? Big Malie broke out on the on the corner of the field. I see I see Anthony Maher pulling your man by the ears off the pitch, <laughs> and Anthony Maher again, the quietest man in the field. But like it was just a mad game. And then then going down the stretch, the final whistle goes and Henley like, had we the free. I'm What's sorry, that? to win it. Who did? did? Oh, oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He and did. He and Donahue's Donahue's back on the on the square. I remember the way because again the Gaelic grounds were so tight. I think RTE had the. Uh, the camera, camera right yeah. behind, like Henley's where you are. James Horan is standing here nearly in the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a, if he kicks this, yeah, it's going on. It. Yeah, yeah. And he, he catches it well. And yeah. I think it's, it, it just didn't have the legs. It didn't have but the legs. But that was like, that was after her. I remember Jimmy and Keith Higgins, unbelievable battle the first day and carried on into replay. A couple of penalties, a couple of rows. <laughs> Collision, Aidan O'Shea actually, and, and, and yeah. they had a huge, and I actually think that had a huge bearing on that game. Yeah. Do you know what? There's games you play and you have a bit of luck, and Aidan O'Shea and Killian, like they hit hit off each other. No it's different to the Gooch. The best players, yeah, no different to the Gooch when he got the bang against Tyrone in 0 5. It took him out of the game. Decked in against you guys in 11. Yeah. Sometimes it works for you, sometimes it works yeah. against you. On this occasion, it worked for us, but I, I remember we won the game and I did this crazy celebration where I jumped up and the boys just ripped the piss out of me <laughs> afterwards. When it, when it, but, uh, very, remember, very unlike an O'Shea to yeah. celebrate the way you did that day. But I remember afterwards Fitzmaurice coming up and giving me a hug and I just said, you were right to drop me. <laughs> Don't drop me for the yeah. final. And he, he you just you laughed. You settled scores with him. It was a clean slate after. After he uh, left Limerick to Yeah, but funny enough, afterwards, um, Eamon had this kind of philosophy about the All Blacks, you know, the, the no dickheads thing, and, yeah. and, and I, I'm sure he had it as well. And there was, But he, he just said, no dickheads. And I remember, it was afterwards then, when I was, it was 15 or 16, I was coming towards the end, and uh, 
you know, like he just kept this mantra, you know, no fella throwing the ties out of the pram. And I remember, and I said this story to Eamon afterwards and he laughed, but I remember Darren O'Sullivan was in the room with me and I said, you know, Eamon keeps talking about like, you know, no dickheads, no dickheads. I think he's a small bit of a dickhead for dropping me. <laughs> 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 he found a funny side play, of it. Play him out. Um, Aaron, yourself, uh, what was the craziest, craziest game? Ah, I suppose it's first year and it was Tyrone All Ireland semi final. Tyrone, yeah, did, yeah. Did. So in fairness, the, the, that was your first saying, year start. Yeah, yeah. So oh five was the first year I get in. Again, we were myself and Mark we were just chatting earlier. Um, the league we were supposed to play a Mayo and league semi final that year in Hyde Park and the pitch was waterlogged whenever we were all over there, and they'd just done the surface up here, so the refixture was here, and. I don't know really. I just I got a chance to get in, and then we beat worked for the league final, and that was it. It sort of Maddie Ford, was Maddie the Ford, yeah. yeah. The, the season sort of yeah. season sort of kicked on from from then. I was in, um, and we had played. Fermanagh had beaten us the year before in 04, yes. uh, so we had a score to settle first round, and then we drew with Donegal after a replay. Beat a real good Derry team, so you were sort of building the whole year, and then to be fair, we ended up here with Tyrone in the Ulster final. Um, stole it, probably a replay the first day, and then there was a bit of controversy over a few sendings off in the in the replay. Um, Stephen O'Neill and Canavan got sent off, and I think Kieran McKeever for us. But it all came out on top <coughs> of that there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, kind of well played. Yeah, well played. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it worked out quite well. That's uh, but there. yeah, it, it, we've spoke about it. It all come down to to the big game where they were, we were the All Ireland champions. 0-2. They had done it in 03. We both went AWOL in 04 and it all went to that day. And like I mentioned, I, I, I could tell you every detail about that whole day um, from start to finish, from the hotel to just the pure devastation walking off the field crying. And you know yourself just how low it is and it, everything seems a million miles away, Do you know. I remember looking at one stage towards the end and uh, you're looking at the scoreboard, you're a pint up, can't remember what it was, five or six minutes and your whole life you're dreaming about getting <laughs> to an All-Ireland final yeah. and maybe that's where some of us took the A off the ball where that that instantly hit hit with me but the job wasn't done and I remember Kavanagh then goes straight through the middle. There was so much that happened, like to be fair, they were an unbelievable team. Yeah. They come with fire and fury, really, in, in 03 and surprised you. And one in all Ireland, there was poor in quality between ourselves and them. It was, it was a lot of nastiness in it. And, and there was nastiness, there was Didn't hatred. 12-9 or something. Point no score, yeah, it, it? Yeah, it, it was, was poor. It's a tight game, yeah. And I think that sort of blinkered an awful lot about that team. Like you had mentioned previously, the football day went on and then to play that year, and, and the quali like that game still ended up one twelve to one thirteen, but it was an for, unbelievable. For I think they played ten games that year. Tyrone, they did, yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. They did, yeah. For, for the, the free, door. yeah. At the end, were you <laughs> talk us because Mugsy had the ball. Mugsy had the ball. When Canavan goes over to take it, do you know he's getting it? Oh, it's, it's a score all day long. If, and if I, Mulligan I had it in his hand, you're taking... Uh, on, there could be a, a chance here. <laughs> yeah, there could be a chance. Go, even with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. And next thing, I just see the wee cheeky grin and Muggsy and he just pops the ball over to Canavan. And I can remember... Uh, what minute was that? Was it... Oh, oh it, was, it, was it was over the 70. It was over the 70. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was game over. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Francie went to one post. McGrain went in behind me and, and Herty was in the lane. And I remember saying to Herty, get the ball, get it quick out, get it quick out to the Cusick stand. I'm gone. And then I remember standing and just looking across and there's loads of great pictures. Well, they're not, you can say they're yeah, great now, yeah, but yeah. of Canavan kind of from behind me or from the this side, the Hogan side, stand yeah. side. And you just see me, and I genuinely, I was like, someone run out of the crowd and clobber him now. Get this, <laughs> get this game <laughs> stopped. Again. Get yeah, get this again. game but stopped now. Potentially was a live possibility during the <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there yeah. absolutely yeah. was, because <laughs> I, that was the one time that I ever played football that, see, on that field, that whole entire day, you could feel the tension mm. that was going on in the stands. It's rivalry, isn't it? It, it, and it was, and again, you're saying it now with a, a mature adult head on you. It was Very absolute rational. hatred between the yeah. players and there was hatred between the supporters and it, it was way over the top and it went way beyond what sport probably should be. 
but it just bubbled for those four or five years. Um, and unfortunately, it, it, we came out the wrong side. But I remember that week, like you're talking about getting different phone calls. I was, I was uh, by no means a man marker. I never really got man marking jobs. But I remember dad calling me into the office earlier that week or maybe the two weeks before it. And he just said, you're going on Brian McGuigan. I was like, what? <laughs> it's a big job, I, yeah. I don't defend. <laughs> I go, I, I'm gonna he said, what do you mean? He has and he said, no, I think you have a job. Or you can do a job in him. He's a very, very important player for him. I'll talk to you whenever we're training, but just get it in your head. This is what you're doing. And I walked out and my heart was racing and that. But quite quickly then, I was, very, I was able to park. Dad was my dad and he was a manager. And I, I just took confidence from him. I was like, well, he knows enough about football. Yeah, that if yeah, he thinks yeah. I can do a job and he's going to tell me what my role is or what I have to do, that's fine. It is what it is. But it was something that I, I really enjoyed. And even now, if, if I'm meeting Brian McGuigan, to have competed against a player of that calibre. He was incredible. He was incredible. In, in, so in, critical in, to in a game yeah. that big, he was, he was just class. And I knew there was times I was running after him and I was like, I just see what you're after doing to me here. He just <laughs> took me way out of the way. And I was like, he's look at the gap he's after leaving. And I, I was learning as the game was going on as well. It was an education nearly, a live education. Um, but yeah, in terms of the raw emotion or, or feeling what was going on around you, it probably felt a bit what maybe you're explaining in your game. You felt, Croke Park always felt big. That day, it felt like it was sitting right on top of you. It just felt like everyone was standing in beside you.